speaking of, hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the episode of Coffee is for Closers. We're back with Pat. Hello. Pat's back from his American tour. I'm back. Yeah, so we can all be thankful that it's not just me carrying the load. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yep, I'm back. I did things in America. I had a wonderful time. We can talk about it. Yeah, all right, let's do it. All right. Ex-Special Forces Sniper turned entrepreneur. I've scaled numerous businesses to eight figures. My name is Matt Ryder. This is my podcast, and I'm telling you to put that coffee down. down. We're back. <laughs> We're back. All right, what did you do in America? Um, mate, I went there to um, – I went to teach two different schools. So I did like two three-day seminar type events, mm-hmm. as well as I went to learn um, – I was a student for the first five days, which was really cool. It's yeah, been a long time since I got to do that. Decoying. So like a decoy is the person who gets bitten by dogs. It's, it's teaching a dog to bite. Yeah. Um, I'm a pretty good decoy. I'm like certainly very competent in Australia. I'm one of the better, um, but I've never taught it before and I'm trying to upskill people in Australia. Okay. Um, and I've taught heaps of people to decoy, but over a period of years, you know, yeah. like it's just, you come, you're, you're in the training, you, you presented an opportunity. We go, okay, I'll show you how to do this thing. But I've never actually been like, okay, this is a course on how to do it. So mm-hmm. I, went to a course of a really good friend of mine, Sean, and he like, I just kind of was there to take notes on how he runs a course because yep. I'm doing that here in Australia, teaching it. So yeah. That's Is good. there a Grant Cardone of the dog industry? Um, the, I don't know if there's a, I don't know if Grant. <laughs> I don't, and I don't mean that in, in like a negative sense. I mean that in like a, just an overwhelmingly large figure that is incredibly oh. successful at what they do. Yeah. There's, there's three in, in my space. Okay. Yeah. They're so, still using MySpace? <laughs> it's why in, they're so big. <laughs> in the protection sport, but also uh, real world pets and like across dog training. It's like, because the thing is with dog training, it's a huge, it's a huge spectrum. So yeah. like herding, I don't know shit about, right? Like I couldn't teach a dog to herd sheep. Like I could help, I can figure it out. I know how dogs work, but I, that's so far outside my realm. Okay. Um, but protection sports is where I'm at. Like dogs that bite people because that sort of translates to a lot of real world application. So then like under protection sports, you get tracking and, and detection and biting and all yep. the things that a dog would be employed by an agency to do. Okay. And we there's civilians that do that for fun. Um, and then all those skills are transferable to pets. So it's the, probably them, probably there'll be people that would argue this is incorrect, but that like, it's probably the most broadly, um, usable skill set because okay. you get, uh, drive channeling, like getting a dog to express itself fully, go mental, like show all the power that you can and okay. then capping that and being like, but now sit and wait until I tell you to do that mm. again and display the same amount of power. And then as well as like, you know, inherent dog skills, like detection and stuff where like, if you teach it incorrectly, you can't help the dog. Cause like you can't do the detecting so yeah, like you yeah, can yeah. get yourself kind of stuck okay so in that space there's three people who are the king dingalings okay and they've got they're independently very successful themselves so the first guy's michael ellis so he he heard that name. yeah you you'd have heard of them all you would have heard me talk of yeah, them yeah. mike ellis is a mondio ring guy so mondio's like it means world it's a it's a sport that he was very instrumental in bringing to the US and he's an incredible teacher and like a super nice dude and you know great on the tools like really good dog trainer but is magician at teaching okay. like he's where I developed a lot I spent a lot of time studying him as a dog trainer and then studying okay. him as a teacher uh, then there's Bart who I spent so I went to Mike Ellis's school I, like I did a week long thing there and there's Bart Bellin who is an NVBK, it's Belgian ring. He's a Belgian guy, was Belgian champ. That makes you world champ because it only They're happens in Belgium. Okay. Right? And yep. that game is only played there, but he's incredible. And then there's another guy, Ivan Balabanov and Ivan's IGP. And so that's that's formerly Schutzen, that's formerly IPO, it's called IGP. Now that's the, that's the sport where they just bite the sleeve, right? Okay. And it's the most stylized. It's the fakest of sports. Like it's not, um, people get upset at saying that as well, but yeah. it's the, it's the, it's ballet. What's the, what's the, uh, what's the shooting, uh, triple gun? Yeah. It's like that. IPSC. Yeah. Yeah. So triple gun as opposed to totally actually going through and clearing a house. Totally. So triple gun looks amazing. I don't know how good it is at killing people. Exactly. And, but like if you're, if you're a coach, so you can get people who 
a real world gun fighters really in the army that will do triple gun for fun and their skills will get really high and they'll implement many of those to their real world. But there's plenty of things that you just would never do because yeah. that's stupid. We had that triple gun guy come out and teach and he was like, you know, dump mags between things. And I was like, mate, you step on? <laughs> but I was like, I was like, mate, I'm only carrying two pistol mags. Like I'm not I sure as shit ain't dropping. Like because I fired three rounds here and I'm yeah, running yeah. over there, I'm only carrying one mag with 18 oh, so they're saying drop it like a suit. Like if you have a moment, just when you change stages. Yeah. Because they'll carry like 15 of the things, yeah. you know what I mean? So like, I saw a photo of me in the GAN, like fully like kitted out. I had two mags on me. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. the rest are in my pack. Yeah. Well, like, I used to carry six M4 mags, one on the gun, yeah. six in my pouch. And then most of the time, if I carried a pistol, I just carried the one magazine in it. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't have the space for this crap. The, the first the first, the first, first time I went out, I carried everything, grenades, oh, pistol, yeah. fully. Because I, I had an SR-25. Right. Uh, but then like, so I was after that, no pistol. Fuck that. Because I had a mag 58, I had a 338 and I had, no, I had a mag 58 and M4 and a, uh, SR 25. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I'm gunned up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't need more guns. Yeah. If I have to use a pistol, I might as well just fucking yeah. jump on a grenade. I, I <laughs> like, I'm I, dead. Like I bounced forth back and forth. Cause I used to do a lot of like prisoner handling. So you need a pistol for that. Yeah, right? yeah. So that's why I had the pistol, but I was like, I'm not carrying an extra magazine. Like a couple of times I carried an extra magazine, but it was only at night and it was on the back of my helmet to be a counterweight to my <laughs> MVGs. <laughs> yeah, so that used to drive me insane. The idea of carrying a weight on the back of your helmet, like, yeah. I remember being like, hang on, I'm carrying this thing just for the we, sake I, of I, it. I cut my toothbrush in half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, to cut down on weight. Yeah, I'm umming and ahhing about weight. how many bullets to carry. Yeah. And you think I'm going to put a weight on the back of my helmet? That's Are you funny. fucking kidding me? I to never, counter balance I feel it? so dumb because I literally never had that thought. <laughs> I was like, You yes, carried boss. the weights. Yes, boss. Three weights. Cut it down to two. Yeah. It have yeah. a front heavy helmet that dragged your elbow there. Yeah. I was like, Well, no. that helps me walk up hills. Yeah. You, just, you just let gravity do the work. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lean into the hill, <laughs> let the hill do the work. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I carried, I used to carry a magazine on the back of my helmet. I was like, fuck makes, that. Makes total sense. Yeah, it's too late. Can't go back. Can't yeah. change it now. Can't change it. I, yeah. just, I had all that weight on me unnecessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're the OGs of it. Like, and they're- Are they, those, are they enemies? Nah. Well, nah. Or publicly? Nah. Like, sort of. Private There's, friends, but public enemies? Like, I think that the thing is, because they're balanced trainers, they're people that use tools, like, they're on the same team, but they do things kind of differently. And I've, like, learned from them all. I'm a student of BART, like, um, but I did Ivan's course. I didn't certify and stuff because it-, it there's a whole story behind that. I've heard the story. Yeah, yeah. but I won't go into. Um, but they're, 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 people get upset at this and this, if this get like, I'm sure these people are going to share this into the dog training space and people will come at me again, right? But for the most part, they're very similar. There's some ideological differences, but what actually happens on the tools is very, very similar. Yeah. Um, so there is no one like Grant Cardoning it, but there are plenty of people in the space who are big names that no dog trainers have heard of, right? So that's one of the interesting okay. things like in the- It's a couple of big YouTube TikTokers totally. that are like have huge reach. Yeah. So like, so like probably in the YouTube space- for me, space, I go, look how amazing they are. Yeah. So in the YouTube John space Dewey, is yeah, Zach George. So Zach George is having this big war with Ivan at the moment, right? Yeah, yeah. But like Ivan, you can say what you like about Ivan as a person. There's people like, cause he's, he's a polarizing character in many ways, but he might be one of the most amazing- dog trainers to ever walk the face of the earth right yeah, okay. and multiple time world champion at, in his sport and multiple yeah. time national champion Zach George has a YouTube channel right and yeah. like like the, the issue with Zach is that like he he provides a lot of value to average pet person that gets on YouTube and is looking for basic advice but then lately he started sort of redirect like he's trying to control the narrative a little bit of the industry and that's where a lot of people Ivan especially has taken offense to that and like hey like you just continue making fun, cute videos for people, leave training actual dog trainers to, to the real deal, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, totally, right? And and it's it's been kind of ridiculous because if you look at, the, like, as a professional, when you look at the, the Zach's work, it's not even, it's not dog training, like, it's just nonsense, right? But whereas, like, <laughs> Ivan is legitimate magician. There's, yeah, 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 yeah. On his course, there's, like, some of the video where you watch entire start to finish sessions with the dog. It's like, it's like watching Michelangelo sculpt the David, right? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you've got the other guy, like, getting bitten by accident on, like, on, like, it's just nonsense, right? Yeah. I think I find, I find the same thing, like, cause, like, Jeremy, like, I have a unique, Jeremy, when he's, in the living room and you ask him questions, the answers you get are incredible, mm. you know, because like he has to temper his answers 
for the people he's talking to. Totally. Right. Which you have to do as a coach. Yeah. Like I, I coach beginners very differently than I coach. Like I just had a guy reach out to me. He's doing really well and he wants to like, you know, go do a, a bit better to get him to a really good income. And I was like, yeah, man, like, he's like, what do you usually charge? And I was like, well, it doesn't matter what I charge, man. It matters what it's worth to you to get there. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you want to get from here to here. What's that worth to you? Mm-hmm. And he gave me a number and I was like, it's worth a little more. <laughs> but like, you know, so you, you, you temper, you like the nuances that you give people. But like when we're just sitting in the living room and you ask him a question, you're like, hey, why do people do this? And you go, well. Yeah. And then he'll give you like this 10 minute like monologue of exactly like, you know, he's like, well, how are they sitting? You know, it's like, well, okay. And then what are their, like, let me see the video. And you see the video. I go, okay, see that right there? That person is apprehensive. As soon as you said that word, like you needed to stop and go back and ask them about mm-hmm. it. You know, and he can look at a group of five people and at the same time, and he can just go like that person's scared. That person's happy. Mm-hmm. That, you know, read, he can just read the room and go, he just knows how to handle people. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. And when you look at someone like that, he's a true monster. And then we get people who like, did six months of our course and yeah. now they're sales coaches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's so fucking laughable. Yeah. That it's like, well, it was the best. Yeah. <laughs> In, you know? Yeah. Because like the moment people get into your thing, you're not any better than your content. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Right? And when you're not any better than your content, it's like our con like my content especially is sort of like verbose, somewhat nuanced um truisms. Mm. But it's not, it's not like nitty gritty, mm. you know, we're like, cause if you, if I, if you ask me something, I have to ask you three or four follow-up questions to get enough information to be able to answer it. If you just ask me something and I answer it, it's a bullshit answer. Mm. You know, like if I ask you like, Hey man, um, my dog keeps barking whenever the mailman goes by, you guys do this. Yeah. Yeah. What a fucking throwaway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or if you go, well, is it more at night in the morning? Are, are you at home? Does it happen when you're not there? Yeah. Like, do they do it for anyone else? Is it just that guy? Yeah. You know, like there's so many questions you have to answer before you go, okay, well let's try this, but it probably won't work. Mm. And then we have to try something else, you know? So, and it's the same with, with, with humans. And so I think like one of the things where I asked the question was cause like we can gleam a lot of insight from all the other industries. And I think one of the things that lacks in the industry that I'm in, and probably I think in every industry to be fair is like a lack of understanding of what other people are doing. That's good. And what other people are doing that are bad. Yeah. And I think like the, there's always a couple of people that are, in the space that absolutely crush it as very rare. They have conflicting styles. Yeah. Like yeah. very rare. Yeah. And like, I think it's more ideological, like how they feel about it. So, you know, like to, to, you know, again, I don't want to fuck get myself canceled, but, um, it, one style is you have to connect with the dog and, and really be with the animals, another living creature and work together. And the other is you have to make the dog think that <laughs> like the outcome is still the same. Yeah, yeah. Right? But one is like, you have to do it. And the other is you have to make him think that you're doing it. Right. So like, it's the same thing. It's just how you feel about it. That is allowed to be different, but what you actually do has to be somewhat the same. I think like there's that, there's something to that level of expertise and nuance. So like when I got really good was spending a lot of time with Bart and it was that he was running these schools, but I would organize the school. So I would not only be at them, but I would be picking him up from the hotel, take him to and from going to dinner every time, so all of that. Bits and pieces you well, that's where you learn everything. Cause I'm in the school, I'm seeing all the answers, but I'm seeing at multiple schools, people ask the same question and get different answers. Right. And then it's like, you know, and then you say, but how come? Because last time you said this and this time you said this and it says, well, that person needed to hear it said like this in yeah, order yeah. to, in order to, to get them to the same point they needed to like they're here so the path to here is different than the path to here even though they, they, they go in the same place they can't take the same journey because they're at different places yeah and then it's like oh okay but if like if you're a student in the class you heard this answer so, you well, didn't hear this answer so that's the truth to you now right yeah. and it's not until you hear it multiple times and see it from multiple perspectives that you can really get it and i think there's that like there's that magic in a level of nuance that most people, most experts just don't get, you know? Yeah. Um, and like, for example, on the weekend, I'm helping a, a, someone get a new dog. 
And I told her, like, you know, imagine yourself, you've just won a big championship and you're standing there getting your trophy and the dog's healing next to you. Like, what is, what does the healing look like? And I, and I was like, you know, does the dog, is the dog's got a kink in its back as it's looking dead up at you or is it forward and its shoulders are like staunch like that? Look, yeah. And, and she's like, well, I don't like, I was like, because that's difference in bloodline, right? Now you can teach either one of those things. You can make it look however you want it. You can teach it. But when the dog defaults to who he is, that means we go shopping in different places. And that's the sort of conversation that you don't get. I imagine it has to be the same yeah. in, with, when you talk to Jeremy. Yeah, I was, I was at dinner with, uh, with, with Cole Gordon last time. I was in, in some of his crew, Mitch. Phenomenal guys, right? Run a great business. They're very good at sales. Like, oh, I, will, I will give them that. They're very good at sales. And I was sort of explaining why, like, you know, we're talking about seventh level and it's sort of grown really quickly. And we're probably like the biggest sales training, at least in the, in the industry that we're in. We're the, like, we're the biggest by a while. Mm -hmm. And we sort of eclipsed some of what they've done in, in a few things. And they're like talking about why. And I was like, well, I was like, to be fair, man, it's just, we have an unfair advantage. We have Jeremy. I was like, that's, that, that's it. Um, you know, we're, we, we think of things a little bit differently. I think most people in the industry, but like we have Jeremy and they're sort of like, and I was like, dude, I was like, you know, you're really good at sales. Like there's no doubt. But I was like, how long are you in sales? It was like two years. I was like, okay. I was in sales for 15. Yeah. Full time. Actually 14 full time. I go, but throw me out of the picture. You know how like people become obsessed with sales and he was like, yeah, like I got obsessed and it's like, yeah, you're really fucking good. You're very good at sales. But I was like, imagine that for 22 years. Yeah. yeah. Like Jeremy has done 166 sales training courses. Yeah. Right. Like, As a student. He, yeah. Yeah. He's obsessed. Yeah. Uh, the only thing he listens to is audiobooks on persuasion. Mm -hmm. he, he reads four books a month. They're all on sales. Mm hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> like because there's fucking millions of them. that's amazing in and of itself that he can stomach that shit he loves it you know like he's obsessed with it yeah because like i'm pretty good I'm, I'm pretty good at what i do and i find it like you know because there's so much repetition because no matter the style no matter what you're into like yeah. probably 60 percent of dog training is dog training like yeah. it, it is what it is it ain't gonna change there, there's flair on top of that but it just is yeah and when you read someone else's book or go through their content you got to sit through that and it's yeah. i find the that thing, like oh God. so so jeremy's job is he's the chief product officer right that's his job mm -hmm. so he every 12 months he has to produce me a new course mm -hmm. from woe to go so we just reshot our entire training portal mm -hmm. and we filled in every gap that there was in like the learning and then we extended it. And so like, but we also, but every four, every three months we have to release a new product, mm -hmm. which is like the 50, like top 50 obliteration. Like I could never write that. Mm -hmm. There's four objections, <laughs> like time, money, think about a partner to him. He wrote 52. Yeah, and he right. wrote a detailed response to each one and, and some context behind it. Are they under the categories of time, money, partner? No. Like, so they're, He's not even thinking in that. No, he doesn't. Like, he doesn't subsets of these, nice. they're all different. I'm a peasant. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. So what? What he he's like? Okay, like he thinks back on his 22 years, and he's like, okay. And also, he's trained so many people now that he's like, he, he just okay. What are all the objections that we're hearing? You know, I need to pray about it. I need to speak to my CMO. I need to. I need to go and speak to the board. Um, can you find me some testimonials? Can you do all this? Whereas, like my like for me, I got good at handling four objections and funneling everyone into the same four. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just take that and I funnel it. Yep. But that's a skill set that I have. It's super difficult to teach. Yeah, yeah. So like for 90% of people, it's better just to teach them how to address it word for word. Yeah. That's a, a an easier way of doing it rather than the way that I learned how to do it. So, but just that, like he has to produce one of those. So what he does is he listens to things over and over again. And then he listens to his own courses over and over again. And then from there, he's thinking of ways of like, oh, I like that, but it's wrong because of this. Mm-hmm. And that will induce this. So, but if I twist it like this, I can use that. Mm. So he's just constantly, constantly like we, we, we just got him like his last three courses. He's done three courses this year, I think. And it's like February or it's March. Sorry. Um, and they've all been on public speaking. Okay. Because he's doing tons of keynotes. Yeah. And so like, and, and for an example, like uh, Dean Graziosi and Tony Robbins are like goaded when it comes to online events, mm -hmm. they might close at 5%. Really that low? Yeah, but I mean, you're talking about thousands of people. No, no, so they yeah, make, yeah, They make yeah, a ton yeah. of money. Five, yeah, yeah. five to seven percent of the room would be phenomenal. Okay. In a virtual environment. Okay. We have never closed less than fifty. Wow. Right. So people are like, "Oh, you got this way." We're like, "Well, we'll we'll stick to our way." <laughs> right. <laughs> Things so are going like, okay. If we have a thousand people on the call, like at our last one, we had 
1,200 people on the pitch, 458 buyers, and 400 declined financing. Okay. Right? So from 1,200 people, we got 848 to buy. Wow. Just 400 got denied Didn't financing. So like, you know, like, the, like that's fucking what, two that's thirds insanity. of the room. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and when we worked really hard, it's a 90 page script, 93 pages, I think it is. Yeah. Um, we work really hard and there's so much like layering of, and when you sell on stage, like it's so different about two weeks ago, I did a, um, I did like a, st- I went to Adelaide mm-hmm. and did like a stage, you know, for like 80 people. It wasn't, yeah, yeah. wasn't a lot. I wasn't selling anything, but I was just going through and I was sort of doing a talk about sales and business and stuff like that. And it was funny cause I like intentionally layered through some of the stuff mm. that I was doing to see what kind of reactions I would get and emotions. And when you do stuff on stage and like we do this in the, in the, in the, in the five day challenges is like, we have to sort of, you sort of have to acknowledge that you'll piss off a sect of them by overdoing certain things. But like you have to lay certain foundations because mm-hmm. you can't ask, can't ask anyone a question. Yeah, yeah. So, and like when we, um, we recently, me and Anthony, we went to, Curran Ray's event. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. Curran he's like Ray. the OG of Australian coaching, right? Yeah. Like he's the first I ever saw. Yeah, so really interesting. So he recently went through a basic, a complete mental breakdown. No shit. And physical breakdown. Really? He had a stroke. Um, no shit. Had like know. serious depression, like so, like cl- classic, like diagnosed severe depression, which is like contemplating suicide 24 hours a day. Wow. And that was for about 18 months. Had a stroke, whole thing, right? But no one ever noticed he was gone because he had that much content backloaded. Yeah. Right? So they weekended at Bernie's, the motherfucker. <laughs> right? right? Well, actually, that makes sense because do you remember um, when I was looking at content here, I was looking at stuff of him and I was like, something doesn't add up here. Yeah. Because like, I was looking at all of these things and I was, I remember saying at the time, I was like, these numbers don't align. Like, he's not got the right traction here for the amount of traction that he's getting there. And yeah. like, I was like, something's not right about his content. That's it's interesting. just repurposed for 18 months. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we went to his event and he's like, I just want to see like, how does this guy do it? Like, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's not in our, like he's a business coach. We're not in his demographic. He's definitely for solopreneurs. Like that's really where his wheelhouse is. Mm-hmm. I would say zero to 3 million, mm-hmm. you know, like we're, we're just way outside of his wheelhouse. So we, but I was just there to kind of see what he had to say, to be honest. It was really interesting. And uh, me and me and, you know, me and Anthony were just, we just analyzed it from a sales perspective. It was really fun to watch. And he did a lot of things really well. They actually called me afterwards and they're like, Hey, what do you think? Trying to sell me. I was like, Oh, do you want some real feedback? Did they know you? No. Okay. So you like, were just a random call. I was like, do you want some real feedback? I was like, yeah. I was like, well, I'm outside of his wheelhouse, but I can tell you what I think from a sales angle, what he did right, what he did wrong. And they're like, yeah, we, we have the same feedback. That's exactly what we thought. <laughs> <laughs> so basically like what he did is he came out and he very, he made himself very endearing, mm-hmm. right. By talking through his struggle. I think he overdid it a little bit. Cause like, the, I think the key is you, you want to have come up, right. Um, but it, like you have to create like your hero's journey, Yeah. but you can't spend too much time in like the pity party section. You have to kind of like talk about it, but breeze over it. You know what I mean? And so I think it kind of went back into the mindset space too much, Okay. which sure. kind of creates transparency when you talk about a thing in the same way too much. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but maybe I only, I noticed that, I don't know. I was just like, uh, I'd say 10% knock it back a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then from there, like he, he did a lot of things well and he positioned himself well. And, you know, it was a little action. It was the whole thing. I could see the whole way. Right. So, but then when he pitched, this is where he fucked it up. Right. Um, first of all, the back of the room stuff was garbage. Like they didn't have salespeople. You can tell it wasn't, but also they haven't run vet in a while. And he just got off a stroke. So yeah, like, sure. This oh, is the yeah. comeback tour. Yeah, exactly. So like it wasn't set up properly administrationally, I think to make sales. Mm-hmm. And then from there, what he did is he, what he did really well is he goes, okay, everybody, um, hands up if you want to learn the skills to make more money. Right now, the interesting thing about that is psychologically speaking, it should be difficult to not raise your hand, right? Because of the way that it's set up, because it's like, basically the first question is who is here and who is committed to achieving their goals? Raise your hand. Of course. I am right now. Who is willing to take the action required to actually make that money to achieve your goals? Keep totally. your hand up. Yeah. Now, if you're st- if you have your hand up, stand up. Mm, that's a step I'm not sure I want to take. I'm wearing shorts, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have your hand up and you're serious about this, then stand up. Okay. Right now, I'm sitting there, arms folded. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting down, but I'm one of twenty out of a room of five hundred. Okay. That are sitting down, 
right? Me and Anthony. I'm like, this is always interesting. And you can watch people as they become more anxious as to what's happening next, mm -hmm. right? Now, then from there, what he did is he went through some testimonials and... Leaves everyone standing at this point? Oh, yeah. You got to leave them standing. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what he did, and then I'll tell you what he should have done, right? So then, and then from there, he goes through, and then he, like, reaffirms that, like, you, you, you know, points people out, codifies them, well done, you're standing up, you're going to take action, do the things required, you're one of the few, the proud, well, yada, 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 right? All that kind of shit. And then from there, he gets them into this frenzy, and then he's going to start his, his price drop, right? Mm -hmm. So he... Gets everyone to sit down. Okay. Right? So he lost the momentum that he just built. He told everyone to sit down, and then he went through his price drop, and he didn't do his price drop correctly. He did, like, one price. He did the actual price, yep. which is 4997 and then he did the, but it's usually 6997 It's like, well, is it, motherfucker? Is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? So what he should have done is it's 6997 six, nine, yeah. but for you, for those of you here today, it's 4997 and for the first fifty, it's two nine nine seven. That's what you should have done, mm -hmm. right? Because he's gonna—it's selling him into a four-day thing where he upsells him anyway. Yeah. So like, it's just people, you know. So you got to do it that way to like build some urgency. But he sat them down. Then from there, he got them to if you're gonna take action on this shit, yada yada yada, and stand up. That's really hard to do. It's really hard to muster up the courage to stand up in a room of people who are sitting down and say, I will do something. Mm -hmm. It's much easier just to stay standing. Mm -hmm. So like he went from working with human psychology to working against it. Okay. And the problem is it's a high risk, high reward maneuver. If everybody stands up, you've knocked it out of the fucking park. Mm. But if five people out of 600 stand up, it's a problem. Then like, how do you get the rest to stand up? Yeah. So do you think he made a sequence error? Do you think like he actually made a mistake and was like, oh fuck, I shouldn't have let them sit down. Right. Cause like I teach live events, not to that many people. Potentially. Yeah. But sometimes you just present your information in the wrong order and yeah. you're like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, cause he, he's not using a slideshow. I imagine. Right. Nah. It seems to spit in hot fire. Yeah. And every now and again, that's how I do it. Every now and again, you're like, oh, they've got no point of reference for what I'm about to say. I forgot to set, set them up. Yeah. Do you think that's what he did? I think for sure. Like, listen, like he was, you could tell like strokes, you know, they, they can, he was sort of struggling to find his words a little bit. I think it could have been a sequencing error or it could have just been like a, um, that's how they've done it in the past. Yeah. But he was so good in the past mm. that maybe it worked anyway. Sure, sure. Whereas like Aaron Sansoni, who's one of our clients, uh, we went and watched him. He, he is good mm -hmm. from stage, right? And what, what he did is he, he gets everyone the same, right? Raise your, so it's like small commitment, raise your hand bigger commitment to stand up, right? Then he goes like after more edification and more this and more testimonials and like anchor price, you got to anchor price high. It's 10,000. Would this be worth it to you if this was $10,000? Mm -hmm. Stay standing if this was 10 grand and it'd be worth it to you. Stay standing, perfect. Because for you guys, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not 10 grand. Now, if you're standing and you would pay $10,000 for this, move into the aisles. So you're like, you're getting this buy-in. Mm -hmm. It's a flock mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Move into the aisles. Five people start moving. Everyone starts moving. Meh, meh, right? Start moving them in. And I'm in the side because I'm there helping himself fucking pushing people in the aisles. Like, get me fucking. <laughs> <laughs> me and Anthony just kicking people into the aisles, right? Like, get in, go. <laughs> right? And then he goes like, all right. Um, now, if you're in the aisles, go to the back of the room. Like, go to the back, Right? And gets everyone to go to the back. So now, essentially, he's got a series of people who are sitting that are like that are, and everyone else who's standing is now toward, towards the back of the room. So what he does is he grabs a chair, walks over to the back of the room, right in front of them, stands up on a chair. So now everyone behind him is dead to him. Yes. Right. So it's like now we're othering people. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then he stands up like this big fucking daddy, and he just starts talking to him again. And then he anchor, he price drops again. Right. So, you know, would it be worth this? You guys have said it worth this. It would be this, right? And then from there, he starts doing things like, uh, which you might like in dog training, uh, when I say go and not before. Yeah, yeah. So he starts like, he starts creating a rhythm of you do what I say when I say it, mm -hmm. right? And he goes like, now when I do it, and when I say go and not before, 
and there's da, 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 and when I say go and not before, not before. Mm-hmm. And then he does a price anchor, a final price, and he goes, the first 20 people will receive a free partner to come along to the event with them and a bottle of Moe. Mm-hmm. Right? Which is fucking genius. The bottle of Moe is genius, right? Yeah. And then from there, he goes, we have 40 spots. There are 300 of you standing. You have 15 minutes. And when I say go, and not before, you head to the back, and you sign up. Go. Like that. <laughs> right? And these people, and then all of a sudden, you just hear a fucking bottle. <laughs> right? Champagne. <laughs> fucking. Like they've won the Grand Prix. Oh, mate. Yeah. I was just like. I got to spend thousands of dollars. Yeah. Papa. Good that for me. It was fucking great, man. It was fucking great. Yeah. And it, there are some things that could have been done better logistically around the sales to get more. But from a stage presentation standpoint, he fucking nailed it. Mm. And it was interesting to see like him, who's like a master of it. And like Kerwin, he's obviously very good at what he does. But like the, the oh, you can see the level of polished mm. like stage pitching, which is different than stage presenting. Yeah. Like stage presenting is one thing, but pitching is a whole different thing. Like the master, the goat's like Myron Golden. Okay. Myron Golden, black guy in the US, just fucking like bo- can't even really as a coaching program where he can't even really explain what he does. He's just so good at it. Okay. Right? Um, like he can because he teaches it, but like not to the level that I've seen some people teach it. Like Eli Wild is probably the best breaking person I've seen break down stage pitching. Okay. It's phenomenal. He, we hired him at seventh level to come in and redo the, like redo our 90 page script with mm-hmm. Jeremy to where like we added in certain things for certain reasons and we, we moved certain stories around because mm-hmm. like he we sort of started to create this emotional crescendo up and down hypnotic type state over the five days where yep. you take people in and out of certain emotions on purpose with anchor words and all that kinds of stuff. This is like quite hypnotic mm-hmm. the way we do it, but he's really good at breaking down how and why. Um, he's phenomenal at it. Shout out to Eli. But yeah. So it's super interesting to watch that stage presence. It's very entertaining to watch. Do you, I think there's there's something impressive, more so about Jeremy though that he's doing that via Zoom. Like, yeah, yeah it's because you know as well as I do, talking to people is very different to talking to people that are in a camera lens, and yeah. even that's very different to talking to a camera yeah. with no one even behind it. You know yeah. what I mean? And so he's like, got no camera on at that point either. Like we turn camera off because it's it's a forty five minute pitch. Yeah, right. So it's too much for him to be on camera for that time. He needs to be able to like drink water, wipe his face. Yeah. You know, so it's camera off just, it's a fucking PowerPoint. Yeah. Right. And that PowerPoint is long and everyone's like, just get to the fucking like thing already. But we just. So he's narrating the PowerPoint as he plays it. Yeah. And we have testimonials and we have like seven price anchors and price drops. Do you ever consider just like hit and play? Like on, on a time he did it especially well? Yes. Yeah, we would like to turn it into an evergreen. Yeah. Um, but it's like we would have to specifically do one with the intent of making it an evergreen where we're very careful what we say. Mm. But like we do it so well, there's always people going, this isn't live. Mm. There's always people. And I go, I, I'm flattered you think we're not doing this live. And people are like, put up a one. Put up a five. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, it's bullshit. <laughs> like, this is all fake comments. Like, because it's so polished now. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, so I would love to do it as an evergreen. Well, I remember the, like, first couple of times you did it here. And it was like, we got a challenge. It's a whole thing. Like, we got to And now it's like, oh, we're doing a challenge. Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah. it's all together. Yeah, it's it's a good system. Um, there are phenomenal ways to, like, kick up revenue. And mm. you end up, like, spending a ton of money, but you get so much back. And then, like, you can rest your ad accounts for... Mm-hmm. like a month afterwards and go upsells. So like the way that Marco has it, he's got it so dialed in now. It's such an impressive feat of marketing to be able to do that consistently. The first time we did it, we got this fucking challenge consultant and everything he said was fucking trash. Oh really? Trash. We paid him like 50 grand. He wanted a hundred. It was like the first payment. I was like, all right. Um, anyway, like nothing worked. All the conversions were shit. And then we just went, you know what? If this is what the whole industry is doing, let's just do everything our own way. Yeah. And then we did it our own way and it works way better. And now we, you know, we spend 150,000 on ads. We get 12,000 leads. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, like our Facebook group's now got 57,000 people in it. Wow. <laughs> you know, like it's a big group. A lot of those people come in from the challenges mm-hmm. and then they stay and even if they don't buy or they, even if they don't attend the challenge, they stay in the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, you come, you keep working at them. Yeah. So yeah. it's good though. It's interesting, but we probably got to go. Yeah, what time is it? 
They passed. Oh, yeah. I got to go. Yeah. All right, guys. If you like this kind of content, make sure you like, subscribe. If you listen all the way to the end. Um, good for you. You did it. Yeah, good for you. Join the cult babies. Closing cult code. <laughs> right? Join the cult babies. Closing code. 50 bucks a week. What's it to you? You've been listening to this podcast for three years. You would have made a million dollars by now. You have to have. That's what the, the, That's the old the, intro used to say. Exactly, exactly. I've been listening. I think it probably has worked out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. All right, guys. Bye. Put that coffee down. Down. down.